Hey, this is Anand Chimpy from Anantech.com, and I want to do a quick comparison here between the Motorola Zoom on the left, running Android 3.01, codename Honeycomb, and the Apple iPad 2 on the right. Now, both of these are actually 3G models, uh, but they're both connected to the same wireless access point about 30 feet away. Uh, one of the things that Apple has done a great job with in iOS uh, pretty much since the start with the iPhone 2G is scrolling speed. The entire UI is just extremely smooth and that trend continues uh, with the iPad 2. Now this is something that Google has traditionally struggled with in, uh, with Android in the past. It has improved tremendously with Android 3.0. Um, that being said, there are still uh, some places where you will see frame rate stutter. Um, particularly if you bring up the apps list, just that animation alone um, is very, very difficult. And it is something that Google said that you know they're hey they're they're constantly optimizing for. And as we see things debut with uh, uh, maybe faster GPUs, we, we might see that improve in performance as well. Multitasking is also an area that these two really, really differ in, uh, and it just boils down to the user interface and user experience for multitasking. So if we go into the iPad, uh, let's say we're browsing and we want to get to, uh, let's say, an application we haven't launched. So let's go ahead and fire up Infinity Blade. Uh, now let's say we're playing Infinity Blade and we want to get back to our previous app. You would double tap the Home button, select our previous app, and that's how you get to it. And if we wanted to switch back, we would double tap again, select our next app. That works. It's kind of clunky. It's three taps to get to something new, uh, potentially more if you have to scroll through a list of things. Uh, Google reduces that to basically two taps. So let's say we're browsing something and we want to go back and launch Angry Birds, for example. Uh, that rotated funny. Um, and now let's say we want to get back to what we were just viewing. We would hit the multitasking toolbar, uh, bring up browser. So that's two taps versus three. And again, if we wanted to go back, we can go to the market. back to the browser. Uh, personally, I believe, you know, the fewer the taps, the better. Uh, if you were to do the same thing on a, on a modern desktop OS, it'd probably be the equivalent of one click versus two on Honeycomb and three versus uh, on, on iOS. Uh, it's a personal preference thing. I think as these devices become more productivity oriented and they become more uh, like notebook replacements for people, uh, the multitasking UI and how that stuff works really, really has to be a focus, uh, a focal point for, for all of these guys. So iOS tries to unify all settings under the settings page. So you see we have a Safari uh, uh, item here, and here's how we clear history and clear the cache. And we get back home. Uh, to do the same under Honeycomb, you actually go into the browser. So this is actually like a desktop, and you bring up a contextual menu, hit settings, uh, and here you've got a couple of options that you can control from within the browser. And again, this is a much more desktop-like experience. Uh, Personally, I believe Google's approach scales better, uh, whereas the iOS approach is more of how you'd expect uh, an appliance to work. Um, whether Apple can stick to that you know, as the complexity of these things increases, that remains to be seen, but it's clear that Google is taking a page from how desktops work and how it wants to do this. Uh, but let's actually get to the browser and play around with browsing. Um, one of the fundamental differences between how the Honeycomb browser and the iOS browser works is how it deals with multiple windows or multiple tabs. So on the iPad 2, you basically have a large iPhone. So if you wanted to bring up another page, you'd open up, uh, you could either leave this page and just go to another one in the URL bar there, or if you wanted to open one up in tandem, you would hit the new window button, open a new page, and we can load something from our bookmarks. So let's, let's hit the New York Times. And there you go. Now if I wanted to switch back, I would hit the window button again, and then pick my previous tab or a previous window. And at least it works quickly and it's nice. Uh, you know, there's, there's no real slowdown in the animation, uh, but it's kind of a pain to, to actually browse the web this way if you're used to having tons of tabs open, like on your desktop, for example. Uh, go to the Honeycomb device and things are a lot better. So all you have to do is hit the plus button and you get a new tab. Uh, and let's bring up, oops, um, let's see, let's bring up Reddit. And we already have read it. So let's bring up the New York Times. And there you go. And if you want to switch between the two, it's just like a desktop browser. You just tap on the tabs. And personally, that's a huge improvement in just how this stuff works uh, 
uh, it makes it feel more productive. It makes it feel more like a desktop. And in some areas, that's not a good thing. But in this one, to me, it, it's a very good thing. Uh, now, I will point out that there is a pretty big difference in screen quality and screen resolution between these two. So just looking at the New York Times, you can fit more content on a single page uh, on the Zoom. It's got a 1280 by 800 display versus 10 by 7 on the iPad 2. Uh, the downside is color reproduction and off-angle viewing isn't quite as good on the Zoom. Uh, and that's what you see a little bit of here. In terms of web page loading performance, let's just go ahead and open up a new page here. The two are fairly similar. Um, if you remove all constraints, uh, load pages over a local server, the iPad 2 is a little bit faster. Um, again, it depends on the JavaScript, depends on the page. Uh, loading pages over the network, for the most part, I'd say the Zoom and the iPad 2 are pretty equal. Uh, there are cases in which the Zoom is faster, cases in which the iPad is faster. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and bring up, let's bring up ESPN just to show that. So this page, I believe, loads pretty similarly on both of these. And you can see it finished in about the same amount of time. Both of these are tremendously faster than the original iPad. Uh, one of the things you can realize or, uh, that, that, that's very, very evident from this comparison is the difference in screen quality and screen resolution. So the Motorola Zoom has a 1280 by 800 screen, whereas the iPad 2 has the same 9.7 inch uh, 1024 by 768 display as the original iPad. Uh, as a result, you can see more on the Zoom than you can on the iPad 2. Uh, so that's a definite win for Motorola. On the flip side, the panel quality seems to be a lot better on the iPad. Uh, and the reason I say that is one, color reproduction uh, looks a lot better on the iPad, and off-angle viewing also looks a lot better, which should be pretty evident from this video.